Hey, what's going on there everyone? Have you ever wanted to make your own uh, custom plugins for your Minecraft server without actually having to know uh, Java code? Well, that is what today's video is going to be about. And I know probably some of you who are actual developers be like, no, that's not right. You can't do that. Well, with this program called Visual Bucket, you can actually do just that. Something very quick and simple and a very custom plugin for your server. You can totally do it and make it using this program, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to head show you guys how to install it, set it up and we'll get started with making some plugins. So first things first, you want to download a visual bucket and you can come to the spigot link and just go ahead to the GitHub and this is where you're going to be downloading. I'm using Windows so you need to download the Windows installer. If you're using Mac or something else, you can download those right there. But I'm going to be using Windows so we'll go ahead and wait for that to download. While the program is downloading, uh, today's video sponsor is going to be uh, the Sangata Marketplace. So if you are looking for some really cool and unique plugins from Sangata, or many other developers and their marketplace, be sure you check it out with the link down in the description. So we have finished downloading and because it is an executable file, we need to open it. And if you are using Windows, this image might pop up, but it is clear and safe to, to go ahead and run. Uh, it just doesn't have any type of verification added to it because you have to buy that. So you can go ahead and run it. And this is actually the virus total. Um, it is all clean. You can check out the source code if you want to, but it is all good to go. Uh, so here is the installation wizard. So once it is going to be installing everything, so then at your final setup, you can say where you want the files to be. I currently already have that installed, so I'm just going ahead and hit update. So for me, I already have a previous version, so it's pretty much just updating it. But for you, it's going to head and install the very latest version. So once it's done, you can make a desktop icon so you can quickly get to it, but it depends on what you want to do. Click next and then hit finish and you're good to go. Alrighty guys, so once you open Visual Bucket, this is what it's going to look like. Over here on the left hand side, this is where you're going to be adding all your code blocks to your main canvas. And you can add multiple canvases as well to organize various things if you want to. But in this video, we're going to be pretty much focusing all right here. On the top left, here is your general settings. You can go through and see all the different types of things. Highly recommend going and joining the Discord if you have any questions or errors or just general uh, help with your code. Next up, uh, we have on our left hand side, you have all your different types of filters for specific code blocks. You're going to be mainly using the events. This is your default events and then your if statements. That's pretty much what you're going to be using most of the time. I like to keep it on all blocks, but you can also have favorite blocks in here as well. So getting started, what you want to do is you want to uh, find out how to enable and send a message to council when the plugin enables. So that is sort of like a good starting point. So we're going to be filtering and searching for enable. So to do that, here is your plugin enable. Just drag the block and put it in your main canvas. So by itself, this doesn't really do anything uh, because we're not checking and we're not sending any messages we're pretty much doing nothing at this point so we need to add things to this in order uh, for this plugin enable to work properly so next up we can actually send a message to our council so we can type in message and we can do send a message so you, you want to drag that block and put it underneath the plugin enable so now it is all connected you can see right there we can send the string, so right click, insert the string, and this is going to be the message that you're going to be sending to council saying, hey, the plugin has loaded up, and it just gives you a nice a message or a debug message to make sure everything is loaded. So we can go ahead and say uh, YT plugin, and we'll just do, uh, you know, some arrows, and then we'll say plugin enabled, yay, right? So once we have that, now we need to specify where it's going to be sending that message. In here, when you click on it, you have all the, the types of lists. We're going to be focusing on pretty much the council. I want to give you an example. If you did try to do command sender, it does turn red. That is because this is improper use of this specific type of element. So you want to right click, hit delete, and then now we need to search for council. You can see right here, we can just do council and go ahead and click on it. And now it turns green and that is successfully added. So that is going to be our default startup message. So next we can start adding specific events to check. In my example, it's going to be very simple. All we're going to be doing is checking if a player is right clicking on a specific block and then we'll send like a, a sound or messages or something along those lines. So to do that, we can do the specific 
the events so you can filter events but in this case I'm just going to type in interact so we need to player interact event so we're going to drag that block right here and put it in our canvas I'm going to move these up a little bit so here we have our player interact event now we need to add our if statements and you're going to be doing a lot of those so you can just type in if and this is just going to be the default if statement you want to drag that right there so in this specific if statement, uh, typically you want to check if the block is null or not. I'm going to skip that step for now just to show you guys uh, how you can read the error messages and then we'll fix that later on in the video. So the very first one uh, I'm going to be starting out is checking the material of the block that we want. So to do that, you want to click on boolean and pretty much 90% of the time you're going to be checking uh, if it is equals. So you can uh, find it right here, you can type in equals and we're going to input the equals statement and then you can see hey it checks if two objects are equal what we want to do right here is we need to check the material of the block and we need to uh, specify what we want so to do that we can do material so we need to check the material of the block so we can do material of block and then now we need to do the block so here we have event block so you can see hey this is a block event this is actually not the proper one because this is using a block event if you try to input that it turns red because it is the wrong event so we need to delete that and we need to go back so we'll do block and we can see uh, let's try the projectile hit so that is the wrong one let's try a click block hey that one matches our specific event so that is a good idea to make sure that it is you're using the right event is to check the description of it and then hey this is the right one so now it is all good once we have material of block now we need to check the specific block item so to do that we can type in block and so we can do a block material so this is what we want now we can add the specific material. So here in this case, let's go with, um, I don't know, we'll go with like red wool. So we can do red uh, wool and there we go. So once we have red wool, so say we want to add a message when we are clicking wool. So we can add a broadcast message right here. Just go ahead and drag it in the if statement and you can right click the string and enter the string. And we'll just say you click the um, red wool. All right, and then we can end it off like that. So that will broadcast after we click the red wool. Say we want to go a little bit further. We want to detect when a player is right clicking on the red, red wool, not necessarily any type of click. So we need to add another if statement. So we can do if, so we can do if statement. So make sure you put the if statement right here. So because it needs to be in the first if statement block because we are checking hey if the click block is red wool then we can filter hey we need to check the specific type of action that is going to be using on the red wool so we need to go back and go to our equals again so we'll do the boolean equals and then here we need to check the interact type so we can do interact filter for interact and here is what we need so this is checking uh, for the player interact event and this is going to be checking in this specific action go ahead and click that so that is accurate now we need to check the specific action type so we can pretty much do the same thing so we'll do action and then here is your interact action so that is what we want and then here we can check our specific type of action so you can do left click uh, right click physical but we're going to be doing the right click on the block so at first we are checking if the material is red wool we'll send a broadcast and then we're checking specifically if the action that they have on the red wool is going to be right clicking then we can send another uh, message let's do a message specifically instead of a whole broadcast so we can do a send message and so we can input another string and we'll say uh right click all right so we'll say right click now we need to send it to the specific player in this uh, interact event. So to do that, right click the command sender and because it is in event action, we can do event player. So this is going to detect, hey, this is the player going to be inside this interact event. So there we go. Next, let's go ahead and send the sound. So we'll do play sound for player. 
so we can play a sound and then we can go ahead and click the sound and we'll just find sound in here. Here you can filter for specific sounds. Let's do like a firework, uh, let's do a firework blast. All right, so we'll do that. Now we need to specify the player. So you'll, in this case, it is still event player because it is in our player interact event. Next, we need to find a location. So we'll do location. So we can filter for location. So we'll say entity location. So location of the specific entity. In this case, it is still the event player, which is right there. Now we can input our volume and pitch. So right click, input one, um, and then we can input one right here as well. So that is pretty much our plugin. So very simple. But that is how the process works of adding your if statements and checking, hey, this is a right click. Now we can build the plugin. I'm just gonna do like a YT testing version. We can do 1.0 uh, author. I'm gonna put striker. We can add a description. Uh, this can be like a for video testing. And then here you can add dependencies. If you wanted to make something compatible with vault, you could add the dependency that is required. And then once you have all that done, go ahead and click build plugin. And here we go, we are building the plugin and it should only take a few seconds once it yields, gets all the specific types of things. And there we go, build success. So that is a great sign. Go ahead, open the build directory and it should put up the file, go to target. And then the file that you want is gonna be your specific name. Do not choose the original because that is without any dependencies or anything. Uh, so just choose your base default name. That is what you're gonna be using all the time, all right? So here is your plugin file. So then you can go to your plugins folder and I am using Revive Node. If you wanna check them out, you can use my code striker for 15% off. So there we go. Now we are added our plugins into our plugins folder. Go ahead and click start on that bad boy. And we should get our notification at the very beginning because uh, at the very beginning here is what we should get uh, when the plugin enables. So let's go ahead and watch our console and see what happens. All right, our server is online. And look at that, guys. Now we have enabled YT testing at version 1.0. And here is the specific notification message. So that is working great. Now let's go in game and see if everything works that way. So we'll go ahead and connect and now we need to get a red wool. So we'll give myself a red wool and then we can check when we are right clicking on it. So we place the red wool and let me show you that specific null message. So as you see in council, if we go ahead and actually left click, as you see, it is null because we did not specifically code the null section correctly. So it is specifically on the left click. So just be aware of that. If we come to the wool, uh, let me go to GM0. If we left click, as you see, it does say we click the red wool. If we shift and left click, it says we click the red wool as well. Now let's right click. And there we go. We just right clicked the red wool. So that is working properly. It gave us the specific sound and the new message as well. And this message is specifically to our player because that is what we coded. So we can go ahead and like spam, <laughs> spam click this whole thing. And we'll get uh, all the different types of messages right there. So I wanna go back and fix this null message. So it's pretty easy to do. All we have to do, go back into our code. We need to add another if statement in here. So we can go to the very top and we'll do if, and then we'll do uh, add the if statement right here. We need to check if the specific block is null or not. So to do that, we can do is null. So we'll do is null, and then we need to check the click block. So we'll do click uh, event click block if it is null, and then if it is false, it is checking if the click block is not null. <laughs> I know it's kind of confusing, but it will work. So next, uh, since we have this if statement, we need to drag this whole entire code block in that if statement. And then now we can go ahead and rebuild our plugin. So go ahead and click build. You can change the version if you want, and it's gonna be rebuilding the process. So I just reloaded with the new version, and now we are left clicking, and there is no more null error messages. So that is perfect. So we can go ahead and right click the red wool, and that is working perfectly. So that wraps up my basic tutorial of how to get your own starter plugin for Visual Bucket and get it on your server. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Highly recommend joining the developers discord where they can help you out with your code and uh, understanding the program a little bit better. But anyways, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.